Free Fire has 45 characters and 20 pets that all have different abilities that impact battle. And with Free Fire's new link system in the game, you'll be able to unlock any character that you want. So the question is, what exactly are the best 15 characters and best eight pets to prioritize upgrading and unlocking? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's what this video is about. I think the first character that everybody should focus on upgrading is Andrew. His ability makes Vester ability decrease by 12% at max level. Additionally, he has an awakening ability that you can unlock by completing specific missions for him. This boosts armor damage reduction by 9% and gives an additional 15% damage reduction from every teammate who is also carrying the skill at max level. So if everybody on the team has Andrew's awakened ability, this is going to make your team ridiculously stronger, which is why Andrew is a must have character. By the way, this video is made in collaboration with Full Frontage, who knows the competitive scene of Free Fire way better than I do, so you absolutely know that these tips are solid. Now next is Kenta, who is actually Free Fire's newest character. Kenta has an ability that creates a shield that reduces incoming damage, which is actually crazy strong, because it's going to face whichever direction that you're looking. Now one thing that's important to note is that if you fire your weapon, that shield will actually go away, so it's not entirely game-breaking, but because the shield rotates with your camera, you can use it to reduce a lot of damage, no matter where enemies are firing from. The third character I highly recommend upgrading is Kelly's dash ability and this actually increases your sprinting speed up to six percent at max level yeah there might be better abilities to use during actual combat but you'll never regret having a fully upgraded Kelly obviously mobility is always important whether you're playing battle royale and you want to just get across the map faster so you can pick up better loot faster and get a better advantage point or if you want to get around the map on Lone Star or Clash Squad so you can outwit your opponents now the fourth character you want to upgrade as soon as possible is Lara's sharpshooter ability this increases your accuracy by up to 30 percent at max level while you're scoped in, which is honestly is absolutely amazing for anybody, but this is especially useful for new players. This is obviously going to help you hit your shots more frequently and help you win your games quicker and level up quicker. Now, if you're new to Free Fire, you can have up to four character abilities at once. These four that I already covered are going to fit any build and it's going to match pretty much any play style, or any map or mode. And if you're new to the game, that's what I recommend starting with. Once you have these characters upgraded and unlocked, there are 11 more characters that I recommend focusing on. So make sure you guys stick around because I'm going to break down exactly what the pro do. Next, we have Chrono's Time Turner ability, and this is an active ability that creates an impenetrable force field that blocks 800 damage for six seconds. Now, this has a two minute cooldown, which is somewhat long, but if the match lasts up to 10 minutes, you could use this like four times, maybe even five times, right? And this ability can absolutely come in clutch if you're under heavy fire. Next is Hayato's Bushido ability, which makes it so that as your maximum HP decreases, your armor penetration increases. At max level, that's an additional 10% armor penetration for every 10% decrease at your max HP and the more damage you take the more it goes up which means that this can absolutely be what helps you win 1v1 gunfights especially if the enemy has a lot of armor. Next is Maxim's gluttony ability and this makes it so that you eat mushrooms and use med packs 25% faster. This is going to help you heal quicker in intense fights but it can also be really helpful when you're trying to escape or reposition yourself and this is one of the must use abilities that a lot of the pros swear by. Next is Joda's sustained raids ability and this makes it so that when he's using guns hitting an enemy actually recovers some of your HP and knocking an enemy down will recover up to 20% of your HP at max level. This is such a good ability, especially when you're pushing into areas where your whole squad is engaging, because as you're dealing damage and you're knocking people down, you're going to be healing up and you won't have to take time to fall back to heal up. Next is Alox Drop the Beat ability, and activates this, creates an aura around you that increases movement speed and restores HP for 10 seconds. Now you can actually pair this with Kelly's dash ability, which makes yourself crazy fast. Just keep in mind that this might be a little bit tricky to control. But hey, that extra speed is going to get you moving across the map pretty quickly. Next is K's Master of All Ability, and this actually has a few parts to it. First of all, it increases your max EP by 50, and EP is that extra energy that you get from eating mushrooms, which is going to actually heal you over time if you end up taking damage. So you get 50 additional of that, plus two different modes that you can choose from when you're using this ability. During Jujitsu mode, allies within six meters get 500% increase to how quickly EP actually converts to their actual health. Then there's Psychology mode, which actually actually recovers three EP every second, up to 250 EP at max level, which can lead to a lot of extra survivability, which is especially useful in Battle Royale. Next, we have Maro's Falcon Fervor ability, and this increases the damage that you do when you're further away by up to 20% at max level. This 
also increases the damage that marked enemies take by up to 3.5% at max level. And this is super useful, especially if you like long range fights like I do. It also works very well paired with Mako's ability, which actually marks those targets and is a must use ability if you're planning on playing as a sniper. Next is Nairi's Ice Iron ability. This makes it so glue walls actually recover 30% of their current durability every second. It also increases the damage that you do against glue walls when using ARs by 25% at max level. And glue walls are one of those things that are used more and more as you climb up into higher competitive game modes. It also increases the damage that you do against glue walls when using ARs by 25% at max level. Now, glue walls are used more and more the higher you climb in competitive. So this definitely comes in handy, especially once things get a little bit uh, more intense later on. Next is Wukong's camouflage ability, which turns you into a bush. Now, turning into a bush does reduce your movement speed by 20%, and it does last up to 15 seconds. But when you are in a bush, enemies cannot auto lock onto you. So this is actually a super useful ability when you know that an enemy is nearby. Just keep in mind that transformation ends when you attack. So use it to escape, make sure that you're good before you actually start attacking. Next is Mako's hacker eye ability. And when you're playing Mako or you have her ability equipped, hitting enemies will tag them for up to five seconds at level six. Now when enemies are tagged, this is actually shared with teammates. So it's not just yourself and that makes it so much easier for you to find enemies, not just on the mini map, but actually when you're actually, when you're scoped in, you can actually see that above their heads. Plus her awakening actually increases the tag duration by up to an additional 5.5 seconds if the enemies move while they're tagged. And finally, we've got Skylar's Riptide Rhythm ability. Now this is an active ability that damages up to five glue walls within 100 meters at max level. On top of that, you'll get increased HP recovery for each glue wall that you hit. And this is a great ability that allows your teammates to push forward as you're damaging glue walls and restoring health on your own walls. Now we still have eight pets to cover, but there you guys have it, 15 characters that I recommend upgrading as soon as possible. Now obviously the combination of the characters that you use is gonna depend on the play style and the game mode that you're playing on, but what do the pros actually play with? Almost all of the pros use Andrew's Armor Specialist ability, along with Maxim's Gluttony ability, and for an active ability, they tend to go with Chrono's Time Turner ability, K's Master of All ability, or Wukong's camouflage ability. Now for the fourth ability, all of the characters that I talked about in this video are really solid competitive options that you'll see a lot by pro players, but you're most likely to see Kelly's dash and Mako's hacker eye ability as the fourth. Okay, now let's cover the eight best pets to unlock and upgrade, starting with the most recommended pet, and that's gotta be Mr. Wagger for his smooth glue ability. If you have less than two glue walls, Mr. Wago can produce one glue wall every 100 seconds at max level, which honestly is just such a good ability, especially if you're in the early game before you're actually able to go and pick up glue walls. Now, obviously this pet's gonna work really well for a lot of different play styles, but it's especially going to be useful in Clash Squad as well as Battle Royale, and a lot of pros will actually pick this and then give glue walls that they get to their teammates. And by giving them away, then they're able to regen more and everybody's able to have more glue walls. It's actually like a really strong strategy. Next is Falco's Skyline Spree ability. Now this increases gliding speed by 45% and diving speed by 50%, which this is so useful if you are playing in Battle Royale. And especially if you are playing in duos or squads, because guess what? Everybody on your team gets this buff. Obviously this ability is not great. Well, it's, I don't think it's useful in the other game modes at all, but for Battle Royale, this is a must-have ability. Next, we have Beastin's Weight Training ability, which increases inventory space by 45 at max level. That's enough space for an entire other clip or some bonus grenades or glue walls, which are always useful. And if you like to hoard lots of resources in Battle Royale, then Beastin honestly might be the right pet for you. Next is Drekki's Dragon Glare. This allows you to spot four opponents who are using med kits within a 30 meter range. In Battle Royale, this is only gonna be useful near like the end of the match, which is honestly like really great, but it's incredibly useful in Clash Squad, which is why this is a highly recommended pet for playing Clash Squad. Next is Pouring's Stitch and Patch, and this increases one helmet and armor durability every second, which is really crazy. But at max level, it also prevents up to level three helmets and armor from being destroyed, which if you think, if you think about that, that's insane. Enemies could always get your armor low, but it will always regenerate, which means that they will need some solid armor penetration to take you out. If you like to play really aggressively and like get out there and like take some hits with your armor, then this is a great pet to have with you because you're always gonna have some layer of protection. Next is Rocky with his Stay Chill ability. This decreases the cooldown of active character abilities by 15% at max level. This honestly is just a really great pet to have all the way around. There are some specific characters that have really amazing abilities that you're gonna wanna use as frequently as possible. Now in some squad cases, there might be somebody on your team that doesn't have an active ability. So maybe in that situation, 
situation you wouldn't want to use it, but otherwise, like, active abilities are really good for a reason. Next is Detective Panda's Panda Blessing, and this restores 10 HP every time you get a kill. And if you are an aggressive player and you're always going for those kills, then this actually can be really useful since it'll actually allow you to save up your med packs for when you really need them. And finally, we have Agent Hops' Bouncing Bonus. With Agent Hops, every time that the safe zone shrinks, you gain 50 EP. And since most fights don't typically break out, break out until the third or the fourth zone, then this is actually going to give you plenty of EP without having to waste time for looking for mushrooms in Battle Royale. And there you have it, the eight best pets that I recommend upgrading for Free Fire. Now, obviously, style, style is going to be the most important thing, but the cool thing in Free Fire is that you can actually swap their skills as long as you have that pet's ability unlocked and upgraded. I want to know what kind of Free Fire videos you guys would like to see, so let me know in the comment section below with the hashtag video idea so that I will see it. And make sure you guys subscribe for more on uh, content right here, and there are some other videos over on the page as well that you guys should absolutely check out if you haven't seen them already. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Free Fire.